Hi, I'm Owen of Van Trekking Lifestyle, and if you've heard the saying, hot as the 4th of July, well, you know what it feels like here on the eastern side of the United States right now. It is hot. So Lynn and I decided this week we'd head up to the highest mountain peak we could find on the east coast. That would be Mount Mitchell in North Carolina. We camped out in a Forest Service campground. We cooked breakfast on the griddle and showed you that. And we answer a few of your questions, and we show you the beauty of of the Blue Ridge Parkway all in one video this time and we start out by showing you the Benihana chicken fried rice that we prepared the night before so we could take it with us we're glad you're part of our journey <laughs> griddle me this can you make Benihana chicken fried rice at home so what's for dinner tonight if you've ever gone to Makoto's or Benihana's or any place like that chicken fried rice is one of the things you can get we're gonna do that tonight on our griddle at home. One cup of diced onions. Cook the onions for three and a half minutes. Drop a little real butter into the onions. Cause you guys would be disappointed if I cook something without butter. Now we're gonna add about a teaspoon of minced garlic. We're going camping and the bugs have been really bad. And Lynn believes that garlic sometimes keeps the uh, bugs away. I don't know if that's true or not. That's my watch going off, telling me that it's time to put one cup of frozen peas and carrots in the mix. You watch your hands? I did. Hey Siri, set a timer for one minute. Set a timer for one minute. So like I just told Siri, you want to set a timer for one minute with this. And get these vegetables good and warm and soft. Is that scallions yet? No, scallions are going to go on for the last minute of the vegetable cook. Because they burn pretty easily and they get mushy. So we'll put those on last. If you're a purist, you probably want to cut up fresh carrots and you may want to leave the peas out. I did hear a joke one time from Confucius that said, Confucius say, a woman who cooks carrots and peas in the same pot is unsanitary. <laughs> Timer is done, one minute. We're gonna take this off now. Okay. We're gonna put two chicken breasts that have been cubed onto the griddle. That's what you want to hear. Season with a little kosher salt and pepper. Clean the griddle a little. So now we're going to put on two eggs that have been whisked with a fork. I'll turn the heat down to low. Season with salt and pepper. One little piece of butter. Blackstone is great for this, by the way. Nothing sticks to the blackstone once it's been seasoned like this. And when that's done, you don't want to overcook it. Off the griddle it comes. Turn the side. Turn the heat back up to medium high. And drop on the rice. Two cups of rice. What's that supposed to be? It's supposed to be our van. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I'm having that. to tell you, I didn't do a good job, yeah, did I? I don't think you did a good job. Oh well. Now we're going to start turning the rice. Now remember the onions and carrots and peas that we cooked? The scallions. They go on top. And the eggs. 
And then we put on the chicken. And then we stir. All right, we're gonna put a little bit more soy sauce on top because we love soy sauce. And we're gonna put a little sesame seed on top. And as our friends from Canada would say, Bob's your uncle, that's ready to take off. So if I were cooking this on the 17 inch griddle, it would be a little more difficult, but you could make it happen. This is a really easy meal to prepare when you're camping, but you might want to cut the ingredients in half. This, this could be a lot to eat. Or two people. Or two people, yeah. Jeez almighty, I poured that all over that lady's lap. You don't work here no more. <laughs> I don't. We're going to eat part of this now and we're going to package part of it up to put in the van back here and take it to Mount Mitchell with us tomorrow. Glad you guys are getting to see this. Wish you could eat it with us. And <laughs> griddle me this. Can you make Benny Hanna chicken fried rice at home? I don't know. Let's see. Oh man. Mmm. I think you might need a spoon. Mmm. 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 That is so, 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 so good. It tastes just like it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Meet us at the griddle next week and we'll share another recipe with you that you can either cook at home or if you're on the road in a van or an RV. Lynn and I are really glad you're part of our journey. See you around the griddle next week. Maggie's ready to eat. Is it, warm, is it cool enough for it? Yeah. Maggie's getting a piece I dropped. Look at this mess he made down here. You got all over that lady who was sitting there <laughs> on the corner. I got fired. I'll never be able to work here at this hibachi grill again. Who cares? I'm going to eat. Well, it's a beautiful morning out. It is. Today. Man, that chicken fried rice was awesome. We enjoyed the meal, sat around for a while, and then got motivated to pack up the van, getting ready to head to Mount Mitchell, near Asheville, North Carolina, to spend, well, as many days as we wanted to. It was a beautiful day to drive on these country roads, so we just took our time. Country roads quickly turned into Interstate 40, heading west. We've taken that road quite a ways before, but this time the first stop, well, it was a blue sign to make Maggie happy. You wanna stop at a blue sign? Tell us. You wanna stop? Is that the word you know, stop? We tried to communicate riding on the interstate so that I could ask Lynn if we were gonna stop at what Maggie calls a blue sign. I know I did say that, didn't I? So I asked Lynn if we wanted to stop at a B sign. So I think it's the sign that she, the it's word, the word sign, sign maybe. We thought it was blue. You wanna stop at a blue? You just stopped at a blue. Just like that, interstate roads turned into country roads. And those country roads, well, they turned into dirt and gravel roads and a national forest. Just what we wanted.
Alaska National Forest Campground. It's first come, first serve. Yeah. Hopefully we can find a spot. Your destination is on the left. So we're going to get a campsite tonight, Curtis Creek Campground. Um, it's up here in the National Forest, the Pisgah National Forest. And, you know, it's a, it's a dry camping spot, $10 a night. The Golden Pass makes that $5 per night. And we'll stay a couple nights and see. And then while we're here, we'll scout out other places that may be free or better. But this looks like a good place to leave the tent and then just go explore. so we can leave something at the campsite so we can go exploring and it gives us a place to get out of the bugs we've been here for 12 minutes campsite set up and we're ready to go explore in just a few minutes but I think we're going to sit and enjoy this beautiful spot up here on the top of the mountain so what do you think chilling chilling we're out exploring of you watching us is, is this your idea of fun getting out on a dirt road and exploring a, a national forest road and seeing where it goes and seeing if the van can actually make it it's a big buck right here it's a big may be crazy but that's what we call fun <laughs> this, this is this is totally fun off at one of the little turnouts so we could get this captured so you can see what this looks like up here. It's beautiful. Wow. The 
last thing she said to me was she was going to get behind those flowers and make this shot. I'm hoping that's not the last thing she says to me. So we're doing the summit trail. It's supposed to be easy, three fourths of a mile. I've so. heard a story, I've heard it said. I've come to believe that love is a bet. Sometimes you win it, sometimes you lose it. Sometimes it calls you right in the room. Come to my table, come to my bed, go. take my mask off. It's like an enchanted forest with all the moss and ferns and... Mid-60s right now. Yeah. Can you believe that? That's good. The 15th of July and in the mid-60s here. It's a lot like what we experienced when we went to the Northern Rockies. It yeah. has the exact same yeah. kind of tree line, a lot of moss. It's really... Air feels the same. Yeah, it's really cool. And we're an hour and 45 minutes from our home. That's just so cool. We should do this more for sure. Okay. Come to my table, come to my bed, go easy, my hunger, easy, my head. Bringing me fire, bringing me water, taking me high, taking me down. If you notice on this trip we didn't bring the trailer or the bikes because it's pretty much an exploring to see what we can see kind of trip and every now and then you'll turn down a road that you're really glad you didn't bring the trailer we wanted to look to see what the uh, tent camping area looked like here on top of mount mitchell well this is what it looks like pulled in from down there drove up thinking it's going to be a loop but it's not. It's just a parking area and you have to walk your, I guess you have to walk your tent in yeah. or your camping area in. So we backed up and we didn't even have to do a three or four point turn. We just backed into a parking place. 
know, pulling out. With the bikes on, it would have been a little more difficult. And with the trailer, that would have been a sphincter tightening moment. So um, it's okay. Boy, the view though, look at the view. Too, it's leaning too much. Owen's trying to make his griddle level because we're going to put pancakes. Maybe. Just less to wrestle with. Yeah. Yeah. That's better, maybe. Coming down a little bit. But we're, he's using our levelers. The level is chalks. Chalks. Sorry. Yeah. Using his chalks to level our black stone. That's crazy, isn't it? Hey, that looks. I didn't. That's pretty good. The one side. So what's for breakfast this morning? Blueberry banana pancakes and the griddle. A little real butter for the pancakes. I think it took longer to level the griddle than it's going to take to cook the pancakes. Yeah, this doesn't take very long at all, does it? No. Don't let your burger burn. Okay. We uh, pre-mix the uh, Bisquick. That's uh, two cups of Bisquick, two eggs, and one cup of milk. And now we're going to throw these down. Add some blueberries. We add them a little bit soon because we want them to cook. Lynn likes to get a blueberry in every bite. So I've got to figure out how she's going to cut this up to drop these down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweetheart. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. If I'd have been an artist, I would have. Made a face or something? Made a face. I'm making a face right now, but you just can't see me. Oh. All right. That's good. Blueberry pancakes. Ooh, that looks good. We lost the blueberry, Mother. Uh-oh. Stick it back in there. Nobody will know. <laughs> Meeting it up a little bit. Yeah. Trying. You know, if you weren't doing a cooking show, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have to do that. Yeah. Some real butter on the top while it's on there. And let that start to melt. First one off. First one off. And we'll take the second one off. And we're ready to eat. Remember we told you the griddle works really, really well for camping trips. We have the 22 inch at home now. This one stays in the van and it works perfectly. It's easy to set up and man, it's just perfect. So you can see perfect pancakes, time to eat. Mm -hmm. Sitting at Curtis Creek Campground in the Pisgah National Forest after a wonderful day yesterday. We need some energy. 
pancakes with blueberries and bananas, all made up, ready to eat. Let's get a bite of this and see, see how we did. And look at that, look at that, look at that. Mm. Mm. Like it? Mm. That was a great idea to add the blueberries. We were gonna do the bananas, but the blueberries worked out perfectly. What a campsite meal to make. It is awesome. Let's eat so we can go continue exploring. for lunch but I had to come back in the van and finish eating. Come on girl, let's go. Pop, pop. Come on, we're not going for a hike, come on. It's raining baby. We can't go, come on. Okay, ride back there. Good thing is I think this rainstorm will pass pretty quickly. We're up in the clouds. We've sat here long enough to notice that It'll rain for a few minutes and then it'll stop and then it'll rain for a few minutes and it'll stop. And boy, when it rains, it rains. It does. <laughs> So on to this week's Q&A. We're going to answer one question this week. It's from a viewer, PC Steve. It's a question and a comment. It's a question and a comment, and we enjoyed reading it, and we learned a lot about us and our viewer from that comment. I'm going to summarize what he said and ask. He asked, have you ever thought about leaving things at home, going with less, and maybe adding to your lifestyle by doing that? Or maybe even not buying some of the things that you buy. <laughs> well, PC Steve, I'll tell you what. Once you watch us for a while, you'll know that we waffle about that quite a bit. We've had a lot of toys in our life. In fact, I can remember a time in my life when I had a wise person tell me that I shouldn't buy a boat. His reason? I would have to use it. <laughs> it took a long time to understand what that really meant. But Lynn and I are at a point in our life right now that we really appreciate having toys and we really want to use them. But we understand what you're talking about. The less you have, the less stress you have. 
Back when we had bigger RVs, we took a lot of things with us that we never even think about taking now. But with the van, we downsized. When it came to having to draw the line to taking zero toys, well, that was just too much for us. So we found a solution to that problem and started taking the little 5x8 trailer with us. Sometimes. But as you saw in this episode, we don't always take it with us. If we know we're going to a place that has water or a great bike trail, then it's going to go, at least right now. But this week we were exploring and we learned that we were really glad that we chose to leave it at home because there would have been a few times along those bumpy roads that I would have wondered about it being behind us. And then there were a few places we got into that would have been difficult to get out with the trailer. But we do appreciate and agree with your philosophy that less is more. And if we can ever stop buying things, well, that'll be a good thing too. We don't think that he who dies with the most toys is successful. It's he that enjoys each day the most. That's the guy that's going to be successful and, and get the most out of life. And that's kind of where we are right now. We appreciate your question. If you guys have a question you want us to answer or comment on in the future, just leave it in the comments below, and Lynn and I will try to get to it as soon as we can. Thanks, PC Steve. In a new segment this week, we're going to show you something we haven't shown you before. A few of the bloopers. Not every take goes perfectly. Who knew that it was so hard to say Benny on a fried rice? Hope you enjoy this. Griddle me this. Can you make Benny Hanna? Griddle me this. Can you make Benny Hanna chicken? Who the hell's Benny Hanna? <laughs> <laughs> just, let me just do it. Griddle me this. Can you make Benny Hanna grilled? <laughs> this week Lynn and I learned something about our beautiful state that we live in there are a lot of national forest roads who knew we, we've never explored on them before but I can guarantee you that we're going to in the future in fact there was so much beauty that we found on this trip that there just wasn't time for it in this week's episode but we're going to end with one final thing of beauty from there this week's look at nature our hike down almost 1,000 feet in elevation, a mile and a half, to Crabtree Falls, and then back up again. But the beauty we saw was well worth all that effort to climb down all those rocks. Lynn and I appreciate you always being with us. We wish you happiness and health. We want you to stay safe right now. We want you to know that we're grateful that you're always part of our journey. And if Maggie could talk to you, she would tell you happy tales. So we're walking on the Crabtree Falls Trail. Mile and a half out and then back. Let me show you what we're seeing. about a half a mile into this hike to Crabtree Falls and it has gotten to be just a little difficult. I think it's gonna be more difficult going up. Oh crap it is. It is getting a little rocky. Take a step into the river Get down on your knees Come to the mountain We'll take it in the view You will find the life is Greater than you knew When you go through the storm Yeah.
be broken and be shattered At the point of no return You pick up the pieces And you let the bridges burn So come to the water Grand Prix Fall! Take a step into the river Where you will find peace Where you go through the storm